Hello, uh, welcome to my channel. My name is Kendall, and today I'd like to review a fountain pen, uh, but I also need to explain why author Neil Gaiman is to blame for my interest in fountain pens. Uh, if you aren't familiar with Neil Gaiman, you should be. Uh, he's an amazing writer, and if you aren't into reading, there are some great movies and shows that are adapted from his writing. Uh, anyway, I blame Neil for getting me interested in fountain pens. Uh, I had an inter I, I read an interview where he talked about fountain pens and you know it piqued my interest enough that it got me started. So uh, I either have Neil to blame or more correctly to thank. Um, I found out later that his go-to pen was a Pilot Custom 823. And in the fountain pen world, this is a very well-known and very well-loved pen, and it retails for about $330. Uh, from what I hear, it is well worth that price tag, and I don't doubt that. Uh, sadly, I am not reviewing that pen, and I don't have it here to compare to this, but I am reviewing this knockoff. It is the Wingsung 699. And it is definitely worth checking out if you're uh, interested in the Pilot 823, but you want um, more of a try-before-you-buy type of option. Or you just can't afford the, that price tag, but you want you know, something that has a similar or similar enough experience for about $30. Um, one day I would like to get the Pilot, but for now I'm very much enjoying this pen and wanted to share my thoughts on it. Um, just, it isn't as well known, but uh, definitely there are people that have reviewed this already. Um, as far as the topic of knockoffs versus inspired by versus outright forgeries, that's a bigger topic, um, but stay tuned. I am planning a video on that in the near future. Um, before I jump in, I wanna say, please hit the like button if you find this video helpful uh, or interesting and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. I have a lot of things in mind that I don't think have been covered uh, by other fountain pen related videos and thank you in advance for your comments. I very much appreciate your input and your questions. Uh, one of the big cautions around the Pilot 823 is about taking the nib uh, taking the nib and the feed out. Uh, not that you can't do that, but that you probably shouldn't very often and you just need to be very careful. Um, now, you generally don't need to take out the nib and the feed, but if you wanted to do a deep clean uh, or anything like that, disassembly is, is trickier or uh, can be. Um, with this knockoff, it is part of the design the disassembly. So um, I want to show you the disassembly in just a minute, um, but I will first just go over this, that um, this does come in a similar colors as the 823. Uh, Neil's favorite is the this brown color, so it was my obvious choice. Um, but the Pilot 823 is a vacuum filler, where the 699 comes in a piston version uh, and a vac filler version like this one. So I will uh, show you how it comes apart, then I'll show you the filling mechanisms, I'll do a writing sample. Um, now this pen is not trying to, you know, disguise itself as a pilot. It does not have the signature pilot clip with the round ball. Um, it has Wingsung 699 uh, made in China on the band. So it's not pretending to be a pilot. It's not a forgery. But obviously the biggest difference is the nib. The 823 comes with a gold nib versus the steel nib here. Uh, I've also heard that people have said their resin doesn't feel quite as you know, good quality. Um, but as far as the, uh, the pen goes, I'll show you the disassembly. So the cap comes off 
like that. Um, let's start up here. Uh, this is a, a little looser than it usually is. If you need, you can use a rubber band, or I have this grip from Goulet that, that I've used. Um, so you can take this out, and as far as cleaning, you could just put a bulb syringe right there and flush this out. Uh, and then these are just friction fit, so you can pull these out. Actually, I'm going to use the grip here. So you can see these come up quite quite easily. So you can swap nibs, uh, clean out the channel or anything you need there. Uh, and then this back end, I've got the knob, and I'll demonstrate how this actually works. But for now, we're taking it apart. Um, so you get something with some good grip to it, and grip onto this little piece of plastic right there and it will unscrew. And so this whole thing comes out. So you can see this is easy to clean, get a Q-tip in there, um, rinse it with water, and then you have this so you can maintenance it, uh, add silicone grease, things like that. Another element I wanted to show is when you have it apart like this, this is one of the elements that really is nice. Having it come apart, you can get a, a blunt syringe for ink and you can actually fill it there in addition to its normal filling mechanism. Um, but in an example where you have just a little bit left of a sample or a vial, uh, rather than a typical filling with a vac filler, it's really hard to get those last pieces, but you could open this up, fill it directly through there. Okay, I'm going to show how to fill the pen. Uh, I'm going to use some writer's blood. I think that ink works really well with this pen. Uh, this is a, is it called an ink miser, I believe. I got this from Goulet Pens. Uh, I think it's a bit overpriced, but it is nice. So, uh, uh, ink syringes like this really come in handy, uh, and one thing you can do you can use this so that you don't have to try to pour the ink into something like this ink miser. Uh, you need enough ink that it will cover the the nib and the feed as you're as you're doing this. So there's plenty of, of videos out there that show how vac fillers work. Uh, so you can definitely use those as a reference. But I'll quickly just show that this this unscrews, and you can see the rod inside with uh, this this piece here. This entire portion is narrow, and it opens up down here. Uh, you start it in the position up here, submerge the nib and the feed, and as you push down, it's creating a vacuum uh, back here. Once you get up to this area and it flares out, it will snap and it will cause <clears throat> the ink to suck up into the, the pen. So, let's show you. Make sure we're submerged. Push this down. Can you hear the bubbles? Okay. Now you can work to try to get this more full. Um, Brian Goulet has some videos on how to do that. Um, but essentially, that's what you do. Um, then you can close this off. something to wipe off a little, a little excess and I'll set this aside for a minute so there you go um, and then as you are writing the the knob twisted down 
seals this portion off. And you can write for a long time because of all the ink that's down in the feed and in the nib here. Um, but when you're writing for a long time, you will want to open this up just so that it allows more ink to flow down. And uh, one of the issues with this pen, if you have this open and you have a lot of air in this area here, you're writing, your, your hand can sometimes warm up this air and you can get a burping type of problem uh, where your big glob of ink will come out. And that's from the air uh, when you have a lot of air in there. So that is a nice feature this pen has is to seal that off. Pretty common for back fillers. Okay, so um, now that the pen is all inked up, we've got some writer's blood, which I think uh, Neil Gaiman could appreciate. Um, let's show you a writing sample. This is a Rhodia pad and let's get this in focus here. This is a Wing Song 699. This is the back filler version. This one is a fine nib and I paid about $30 for it. I think you can get better prices out there, but honestly, uh, $30, I think, is a, is a really good value for this pen. Um, let's try some lines here. So you can see the... And if my microphone is working well enough, I think you can, you can hear quite a nice feedback to this. I have not adjusted this nib or done anything. It's just out of the box. This is how it has, has worked. All right, the ink is Diamine Writer's Blood. This is a nice wet ink. I really like the color. It's, it's just a dark red. Uh, I prefer over the ox blood. I think it's just nice, just darker. It's also very wet, so it works in uh, even your drier pens. All right, uh, for the writing sample, I've got some Neil Gaiman quotes. That's a good one. That's from that's from Coraline. All right, one more bonus. Okay, hopefully you can read my handwriting. 
Uh, so yes, definitely a shout out to Neil Gaiman for his passion for fountain pens. It's what caused me to take a peek. Uh, and you know, as, as much as the controversy could be over a knockoff pen, uh, this is, I really have enjoyed it. Uh, and it's given me a chance to, you know, connect with this type of a pen that I would not otherwise be able to afford. And although it's, uh, it's not going to be the same, uh, to me, it's, it's been very fun. So, um, let's go through quickly the pros and cons, starting with the pros, the, the price tag, obviously $30 versus 330. Um, part of that is we're going to worry less about traveling with it or losing with it, or sorry, losing it, dropping it, um, less worry about the disassembly process, which I, I really feel is one of the, uh, the biggest things with, with this, uh, that hasn't gotten enough attention. And there is a piston option. If you don't like the vac filler, uh, the vac fillers do have a shutoff valve to prevent the, the burping I talked about. Um, it has a huge ink, ink capacity and it's easy to swap out nibs, things like that. Uh, so the cons, the, the burping is an issue that's going to be an issue with any backfiller. And, uh, you know, the shutoff valve helps. Um, but it's just something to know about. Also, it's a knockoff. So that can bother people for sure. Uh, this, uh, you know, I have heard of quality controls. Could be an issue as well. You might get a, a nib that's not as, not, not uh, great. Um, I've heard sometimes the threading on the cap maybe aren't as good. I still think it's worth a shot at $30 to try it. Um, and the idea that you can swap the nib out if you've got an issue. So, um, and then another con, just vac fillers in general, they're hard to clean 100%. Um, but that's where the disassembly really comes in, uh, comes in handy for this. Uh, so, coming up... Uh, I am going to make a video all about the topic of knockoffs versus a pen that's inspired by another pen versus a forgery. Uh, I have nine pens in my collection that are knockoffs that I'm planning to include at least briefly in that video. And yeah, so I, do, I am interested if you have topics that uh, I should consider covering, things that are lesser known, things that are controversial. Uh, I'm not saying that I am an authority, but I am trying to cover things that are, you know, not, not as uh, much talked about. So do you have a 699? Do you have uh, both the 699 and the Pilot 823? And if so, I'd love to hear what you think of it, how they compare. And uh, in my review, did I miss anything? Let me know in the comments. Uh, thank you in advance, and that is it. Thanks for watching. I will talk to you later.